Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Serenity data mine information for pets. So if you click on pets, you'll see there's a list of pets that you can find. And we can use this for is you can find certain things. So you could find, if you click control else, you could look up increase this. So you need to have the ESPN, the targets. And we can see everything that gives a cheer, basically, by doing this. And you can see the required amount of charisma required to catch it underneath the pet's name. So you can see increases the target's movement speed, physical attack, gold gene, magic attack, magic attack, physical attack, physical attack. And it's just a list of every single pet that has these physical cheers. Um, you can also use it for other things, like if we typed in blind. You'll see blinding poison, 50% chance of blinding target, blinding target, blinding target. You'll see all of those. And you'll see you can get it as soon as a vicious scorpion. Deal 200% of physical attack to a single target has a 50% chance of blinding target for 30 seconds. So what this tells you is, is that you can actually get a um, pet that blinds as early as Stan Plane. And me thinking that I needed to go only to ravine to get the ravine back was a terrible idea because I could have just got a scorpion. Yes, sometimes learning, learning tells a lot. Um, but you can see there's other things. There's a lazy, lazy azure moth that you can get in Skyvine that does the same thing. It does 200% magic attack and has a 50% chance of blinding a target. It's just some, some of these things are hidden and it's hard to find in the codex. So this makes it a lot easier to find those types of things that you want. So say it decreases all defense of the target by 15%. We, we, you just need to type that in literally. Decreases all defense of the target by 15, oh, that's 20, 15%. I'm terrible at typing, yes. Um, so we'll see here, we can get a wormy as, as early as 32 that decreases all defense of the target by 15% for 10 seconds. So, and then you can scroll through Click, click the buttons in order to see, and you can use this to find whatever one you want. You can't really search by charisma, there's not really an option for that, but you can scroll through and see every single pet and every single effect of those pets in the whole game, basically, through this data mine list. And if we go back, we will see there's something beside that that says Pet Stats Calculator. And basically what it is is you can find the pet level, the player charisma, you can, be an ar you can choose an archer option, and you can search through a database of every single pet in the game. And there's literally every single pet. And you can also look at Mertz. I don't know what the Mertz option does. I haven't invested in that at all. But I have looked through some of these pets. And I noticed that, for example, if you click the Cottontail Rabbit, the attack, there's style 16 affects the stats in the following ways. Already calculated above. Attack min, zero. Attack max, zero times. Accuracy, zero times. Critical, zero times. HP, one times. Physical defense, etc., etc. So, this was interesting to me. And what this made me realize is, if I click Docile Fox, what, what does this mean? I have all the information here. If I increase the pet level, it increases, it increases that, as shown. Attack min, it starts off at 28. If I increase it all the way to level 500, and attack min is 158, attack max is 234. What does this mean though? And I had, I'm not 100% sure still, and if I increase charm, charm increases pet damage base, and say we were 500 charisma, 500 attack, you know, this would be the stats that the pet would have. But, let's say we have a boulder wolf. The Boulder Wolf has 964 and 1,212. Uh, but if we go back to the Docile Fox, it has way less attack and way less uh, damage in general, right? The crit rate is 13.3, 3, while Boulder Wolf's is also 13.3. And I looked and I'm thinking, right? So what is, what is the difference between these? Well, an attack min on the Boulder Wolf and attack max on the Boulder Wolf is 1.2 times for both of them. While a docile fox only has a one times on both of them. And then I looked at something else that said HP. HP is about 28k on the docile fox. On the boulder wolf, HP is significantly lower, 22k. Well, that made me think, well, 
the HP is 0.8 times for a boulder wolf, and for a docile fox is 1 times. And then we look at physical defense. The physical defense on the fox is 1 times. Physical defense is 14.4k. And then we go boulder wolf. And we see that's 0.9 times. And we'll see the physical defense is 12.9k. So that's lower as well. And what I've started to realize is that physical dodge 1 times, magical dodge 0.5. I don't know uh, docile fox is the exact same. But you'll see there's different, there's different stats for each one of these. So there's different styles. And... What I've kind of realized is, is that if you can find styles where for a archer or for other classes in general, if you're looking for a really tanky, like you want a really tanky pet, then you would want to go through here and you would look for something that has your physical defense, magical resist, physical dodge, physical dodge, etc. You want to have those at the highest possible for your pets. And this is how you can look through and find what type of pets you want to tame. Based off of stats, you don't know what their abilities are per se. But for example, what I realized is that I wanted to use something similar to the wolves that give 1.2 times. And it made me realize, well, I want any of the wolves that do a lot of base damage because I want to be a charisma type archer. So I went through and I looked and I ended up choosing a hungry coyote. And if you look and see base stats. Let's see here. We'll do 28. 28 to be able to summon it somewhere around there. And we'll compare it around. We'll say, okay, 44, 54. Um, is there anything later gain that we can get that's similar? It's also a coyote. Let's see if it makes a difference in stats. What would be similar to the coyote? Um, you know what? Let's let's take a complete detour. An owl bear. A lot of people are saying owl bear is really strong. Well, an owl bear with 128 has 44 min attack and 44 max attack. So let's just keep the min in mind. 44 is also a style 18, so that's 1.2 attack. And we'll take owl bears 1.2, and we'll remember 44. And we're going to look for our fox again through this list. And we'll just say any fox probably works. No, every fox does not work. And that is on that is on me, and I apologize. I thought that it would, but you'll see here. 44, 54. Same thing as the owl bear. 44, 54. What matters, I'm pretty sure, is not the level of the pet or any of that. What actually, what I think, and this is all opinion based and all theoretical. But what I think matters is these, like, Pokemon S stats. So I think the Pokemons have, like, ETs or, you know, they're hidden, they're hidden stat points so that as they level up, they'll gain more than others based off of these. So that's my idea for this. I'm thinking that you want to get, if you are a Charisma-based Archer, which means that your biggest benefits are going to be off of the pet's attack being increased by a certain percentage. You're going to want to have these pets that give attack min attack max of 1.2 times versus the ones that give 1 times but then their HP is higher. What's the benefit of their HP being higher if they're doing less damage? You can just heal, like, throw some heals on your pet but your pet's doing absurd damage outscaling almost anything in the game. Right? At least early to mid game you're going to be doing a lot of just smashing through PvE. That is how I feel. That is my recommendation. And that is kind of how you'd use this. You can click Archer and you can have your you can see your passive. So we can say we have max passive with max dynamic duo. And we'll say that the pet level is something reasonable right now would be 130. And we'll say that our player charisma we've upped it with gear and 160. Your pet's going to be doing between 18k and 20k damage as an owlbear. But, um, and you're going to have, you know, a huge crit bonus while this buff's active. If the buff's, the buff's not active, say it's not active, you're only going to be doing 2.5 to 3.1k. While this buff is active, you're tearing through mobs. It is the most painful 60 seconds for anything. Even in PvP, it's going to be tearing through and then 
your crit rate is going to be absurdly high while this is up because it's an 8% crit increase. And if you actually go to the wolf again, which I'm not sure if this one in particular has it, but I know that, sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. I apologize. I know that some of the wolves or other animals have a 50% damage increase, and you can see the attack and the min and max attack is about the same as the owl bear. But the wolf, I believe, has a 50% base attack rate increase already. So you're going to have an extra 50% attack on top of the, in, the already buffed attack that it gives by itself, plus the enhance, plus the dynamic duo bonus. And this is just a really cool way to find out what type of pets you want to tame, in my opinion. And you can see other things. So we can see, let's say we want to check out, you know, Wormy. Wormy is still going to be doing absurd damage while it's doing its defense debuff on the other enemies. But it drops off by about 8k damage from not having that 1.2 times that it scales with. And like I said, I just think of it as these are like hidden stats for, you know, basically kind of like hidden stats for kind of like Pokemon. For these things have hidden styles that affect their stats differently. And I think that's kind of interesting. And I think that you guys could go to this website and look for yourselves. And I'll, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description and check it out. Sorry if I was a little bit repetitive throughout the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will catch you guys next time. Leave a like and subscribe.